This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, for October 5, 2023, Four boys arrested for alleged rape of female student at the St. Anne's School. The news has been informed that four male students of a high school in St. Anne has been arrested and remain in custody in connection with allegations that a female student at the institution was raped on the school compound. The incident reportedly occurred during the first week of the new school term last month. It is also reported that the student was admitted to hospital following the assault. The news was informed that the matter was only reported to the board chairman and the members at a board meeting held a Tuesday. A source revealed that the delay in reporting the incident was not well received by the board members who took issue with the principal. Following queries by the news, the St. Anne police confirmed that an incident occurred at the school and an investigation is underway. The alleged victim of the assault has not returned to school since the incident. Jennifer Gray's three children, four Varel Manning, are now fatherless, and she is wondering how they will ever move past his death. He was one of four men gone down during an early morning attack on Wednesday in Summerfield, a usually quieter community near Chapelton in Clarendon. I got a call from a neighbor early this morning to say that a shooting happened, and my baby father is there. When I got here, I saw all of them lying in there. I know all of them very well, and I don't know of them giving trouble. It was a karaoke Tuesday, so the DJ was there. I am very caught up because two of the three children just passed for high school, and so this will be very hard to get over, Green told the news. According to the police, the incident took place about 1.15 a.m. while the men were at a bar in the community. Also among the dead is Varel's brother Theo, 44-year-old Kish Brown, in whose shop the murders occurred, and a man so far only identified as Rasta or Tompa. A video making the rounds provided a glimpse of the carnage that took place in the wee hours of the morning. One man inelegantly sprawled on his back, one leg precariously caught on the base of a nearby bar stool, had a larger red stain near the armpit of his white sleeveless shirt. Next to him, also face up, another man with a blood stain high up on the left chest area of his black and white shirt. A few steps away, face down, yet another in a white sleeveless shirt this time with two spots of blood on his back. The fourth man, clad in navy blue shorts and a tan shirt, lay on his side. Already rattled by the vicious attack, the community then had their usual routine disrupted as investigators processed the scene as a day broke on Wednesday, with a section of the main road leading in and out of the busy town cordon off, scores of students were inconvenienced. Checks with school administrators at the Clarendon College revealed that several students arrived late for classes and were visibly traumatized. Chapelton Allage, St. Paul's Anglican Basic, and the St. Robert's Bellarmine Prep Schools in Chapelton were affected. So too were students of Edwin Allen High, though to a lesser extent. Member of Parliament for North Central Clarendon, Robert Morgan, sympathized with residents. It is a really sad situation. We are not used to this sort of criminality. To lose a four constituents in one incident is very traumatic for the community. This is a community that the police will tell you, we don't have these sorts of things happening on a regular basis. But we live in a society where people are becoming very heartless and very brazen, and we just have to join together as a community and just to support each other in this time of grief, he said. Morgan said that the incident will likely temporarily put a damper on activities within the community as well as the residents' livelihood. People are very concerned and nervous because we don't know what the motive was or who did it and we have not gotten much information from the police where the motive would be coming from, he said, adding that while residents are worried, they are nevertheless resilient. The children are traumatized and the residents are concerned about their own safety and that of their children. The police have to do their work, and as a political representative, we have to play our role, the MP added. He said there have been ongoing efforts to dissuade youngsters from a life of crime, and while murders were down by 13%,
He has been speaking with the Minister of National Security, Dr. Harris Chang, about how to address the challenges being faced by police in the area. On Wednesday, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of Area 3, Glenford Miller, appealed to residents to provide any information that may help shed light on the killings. This space is one of the quieter areas in northern Clarendon. It's one of the areas that has not had any form of violence where crime is concerned. So when a situation like this takes place, it actually shocks the entire community, and we are looking to the entire community to come on board and help us to solve this crime, said the senior cop. He added that the Community Safety and the Security Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force has already been activated and will be providing grief counseling for those immediately affected. For now, he and his team will be moving to curb the thriving nightlife within Summerfield, which he said now operates 24 hours a day. They will start by reviewing the Noise Abatement Act, Miller noted. There are cut-off times for all the establishments, so we are going to see how best we can do some educational campaigns and implore persons that once it is the cut-off time, then it should be closed, he added. Businessman held with over $130 million worth of cocaine, sentenced to 18 months. St. James businessman Rohan Cummings, who was held with U.S. $850,000 or Jamaican $130 million, $8,520 worth of cocaine inside a bus he was driving in March 2022, was sentenced to 18 months in prison. He avoided the maximum five-year prison sentence after his lawyer argued for leniency in the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday. Cummings, who was found guilty of possession, dealing, and trafficking cocaine, was also slapped with a combined $3 million fine. He pleaded not guilty to the charge of conspiracy to export cocaine, for which the prosecution offered no evidence. Members of Cummings' family came out to support him, while the businessman remained calm in the prisoner's dock throughout the proceedings. During Cummings' sentencing hearing, his attorney, Henry McCurdy, asked the court to impose a fine rather than imprison him, arguing that Cummings' aunt relied heavily on him for daily care and support, and emphasizing the devastating impact his imprisonment would have on her well-being. All of her vital signs have been going up and down since he was convicted. A custodial sentence will place a burden on her, and the family is afraid she might give up if he is sent to prison, McCurdy said. McCurdy also stated that while his client has expressed remorse, he is disappointed that he was convicted of something that he has no knowledge of. In handing down sentence, presiding judge Keisha Grant Price noted that such offenses are governed by the law and that her goal in the entire procedure is to be an umpire throughout the trial and to come up with a determination of guilt or innocence after the trial as well as to use a scientific approach to sentencing. We start by looking at the Dangerous Drugs Act and charged with such a serious offense. I am sure that this act has been properly and carefully ventilated by yourself and your client, Grant Price told McCurdy. Section 8 of the act, as amended in 2016, carries a maximum sentence of up to five years in prison and a fine of no more than $2 million for cocaine possession. Grant Price emphasized that the aggravating circumstances that go against the defendant, such as the fact that they had to go through a full trial, the quantity of the drug, the prevalence of the offense, the potential for it to negatively impact several people's lives, the street value, and his lack of remorse. However, she took into account the mitigating circumstances, such as the fact that he has no previous convictions, that he is a family man, that he has an aunt who is reliant on him, that the community speaks highly of him, and that the social inquiry report is relatively favorable. In terms of sentencing guidelines, she stated that if a trial is held, the typical sentence ranges from two to three years, depending on the mitigating circumstances. Based on the aggravating circumstances and the nature of the drug, he will have to serve a period of confinement, the judges said. But the court is moved by the plight of his aunt and is even prepared to reduce what the sentencing guidelines dictate. However, it will still be a period of confinement and a fine that will be imposed on Mr. Cummings. That is as much a leniency as I can give because it was outside of what the sentencing guidelines have prescribed for me to follow. 
there cannot be a community-based sentencing for 35 pounds of cocaine, she added. In addition to the mandatory 18-month prison term, Cummings was ordered to pay a fine of $1.5 million or nine months imprisonment for possession of cocaine and $1.5 million or nine months imprisonment for trafficking cocaine, with sentences running concurrently if the fines are not paid. He was admonished and discharged for dealing in cocaine. In accordance with the court records, Cummings was pulled over by the police on Long Hill in St. James on March 7, 2022, at 2.45 p.m. The bus was searched and 35.5 pounds of cocaine was found in the left-hand and right-hand panels of the vehicle. The cocaine was reportedly found wrapped in 16 packages. Under caution, Cummings claimed that he had boarded the bus in order to pay a visit to his granddaughter. He was taken into custody and interviewed, following which he was arrested and charged with breaching the Dangerous Drugs Act. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.